food stamp fraud. Where did you first see this? What made you even get this idea in your head? That, like, I'm about to finesse these food stamps. Man, it really started with taxes. Um, <laughs> we was doing tax fraud. Well, I tried to do tax fraud. Okay. And I just never came up like I was supposed to. And uh, like my homie, he was doing, he was like making a killing. What's a killing? And when you say I ain't come up like, you gotta break this shit down for me. Cause you say I ain't come up like I'm supposed to. I don't to. know how much he was making, but I'll break down how much money you can make off one card. He would pull up on me with a card with like seven bands on it. And like basically the process was you have to have a list of names and basically you go file the taxes on TurboTax.com and Basically, the, the the amount of names you had basically determined how much money you gonna make. Where you get these names from? This nigga had a plug that worked at a hospital, oh, and he had unlimited amount of names. And the type of nigga he was, like he would go big. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't no small time nigga. And like we first introduced me to it, he was like, "Yo, bro, I got this drug." Before he had any money, he was like, "Yeah, bro, I got this." He showed me some paperwork with like a bunch of names, and I was like, "Bro, you about to go to jail, nigga?" So I was like, "Nah, I'm straight." So. I seen him again, he was like, yo, I told you, bro, I'm about to, he showed me a BMW, he's about to, he's like, I was like, bro, you cap, man, you ain't getting that shit. Man, two weeks later, nigga pulled up in that same BMW, he said he cashed out like 30K. Damn. And so, I was like, yo, put me on after that. <laughs> he made me a believer, but this was like my introduction to fraud. He was like, yeah, I'll put you, well, he kind of bullshitted for a couple weeks, finally put me on, showed me how to do it, but he only gave me like five names. Mm. So I ran the five names, I probably had like one go through, and I was like, yo, bro, I need some more. So this was like 2011, going in 2012. So I was, this was at the end of 2011. So taxes ended at like November. So I was like, yo, I bet 2012 come, I'm about to go crazy, bro. I, I like had my little plan, had a bunch of names. As soon as January came, I went, I went in and it failed. Mm -hmm. I put in so many names, bro. I, I was, I was looking at like. Five mil, Sheesh. and it just did not go through, bro. I don't know why, I don't know, like the universe just wasn't fucking with me. And so what I did was, so I put, I put a bunch of names and they went through, but the cars that I had froze up. And so I'm trying to this think like- This is the tax cards. Tax cards, okay. yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how can I get these motherfuckers unlocked. So I called, they was like, yo, you need, you need to have IDs. You need to send your ID. I was like, shit, I don't know nobody. Let me figure this shit out my damn self. So I'm on a, on Photoshop trying to make an ID, and I and I cracked it. I cracked the code. Oh shit! So I sent one in. It didn't it didn't get approved or nothing. So I'm like fuck. So um, this was going in 2000. I worked the whole year of 2012. Nothing came out of it. I probably made like ten fifteen thousand dollars, but it wasn't the five mil that I was expecting. Right. But this free bands though. Like, yeah, but. You say it ain't work. <laughs> that wasn't nothing, bro. Like, I hear you. I was trying to get the whips. I was trying to get everything, bro. I was trying to move out to mama crib. I was in my mama basement at the time. And so 2013 came and taxes was kind of dead. And so he started fucking with the food stamps. And okay. he like, so he had names. He was just putting them in and they was going for him. And basically it froze up on him the same way it did with the taxes. They're like, you need ID to do this shit. So he was like, yeah, bro, I need, I need an ID, man. I was like, shit, I know I do IDs, nigga. And he was like, all right, bet, do one for me. I did one for him, he put it in, it worked. So he was paying me like $100 uh, uh, ID. And then from that, he was like, yo, he, he paid me like three grand for like 30 IDs. And then he was like, yo, bro, this is costing me too much. Let's just be business partners. So basically I was his ID, man. He would do the rest of the work. And then that's when my, my scam life started. Damn. Yeah. So he like your food stamps. And this is when you like, you was like, I, I wanna buy my own store? Yeah. Well, nah, it, it, it was a process. Cause like the whole 2013, we was just, we was just grinding. Because it wasn't like the 7,000 you was making like on the taxes, it was like $194. Okay. But How do you make that though? Because I'm, cause food stamps is, is a food, or you're right. getting the money. Cause I know it, it's two different things. You got food stamps and then you got the, the sub like the money that they give you on a card. Right. So it come on a card, but that's what you need somebody that has a store to basically take the money off for you. And it's basically like a sixty forty split. So y'all had three people in involved now. You got the ID net nigga, the, the nigga that's doing it, then the person that's at the store, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And All then, right. So we working, we got a store man, we 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 running it up and by like well no, nah, it's really more people than that. Like we had a whole little team. We had like, cause you gotta do the interviews. We had a, a, somebody, like two little niggas doing the interviews. We had somebody else doing applications. 
and I was doing IDs, he just kind of, he just ran everything. You know what I'm saying? But off of, I'm thinking off of 194. You might, y'all got to be doing like a lot because yeah, 194 yeah. off of like five, six people. Yeah. That ain't really. Yeah, I know. But the thing was, we wasn't paying them off the okay. cars. We paying them like an hourly pay type shit. Okay. And then, so like, let's just say, because even time, when I was in prison, I was telling this story. Like, they'd be like, yo, you're doing food stamps for all $194, bro. I want no money. I'm like, bro, do 194 times 500. That's 100 bands mm. a month. You know right. what I'm saying? Like consistently, you ain't got, once you put the, the, the food stamp in, it's like, it's it's go. You know what I'm saying? You got to put another application in for another year. So if I got 500 cars and I make 100 bands a month, so I'm I'm guaranteed 600,000. So it probably took us, it probably took us a year mm -hmm. to get about 500 cards. Mm -hmm. And when 2014 came, I was like, bro, I need my own store. I'm tired of giving a nigga 60, 40. So I had enough money. So like I put together a store, a little, little convenience store. So was this, you said it's like a little convenience store. Is this something that you like just created or it was a big like, it was a storefront type thing. It was a storefront. Yeah, it was a storefront. I had two of them. But it was strictly for food stamps finesse. Straight for, I ain't even have a customer, nigga. I might have one customer a day, but my, my store was making like, the goal was to make like a thousand fifteen hundred a day. Nigga, I had one customer a day. It was just a front, just a so like you had a store and then they'll give you a portable machine and like I had a machine at a, at another location where I had somebody sitting there all day. Swiping, look, every five, 10 minutes, you swipe. But I mean, at that point, you wasn't thinking like, I'm gonna get caught, cause like, if I'm only giving one, they gotta see some type of foot traction, right? Like, no, like, Man. that's the first thing that's coming to my mind. Like, if, if I'm swiping 100 times a day and you only got one customer. Hmm. Well, I wasn't thinking about getting caught. I was nervous, but it was like. Run this shit up while I can. <laughs> it was like, okay, nobody's gonna know that I'm making this money. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like the the neighbors, they they don't know I'm making money. I just got a store. Even if one two people come in, people just be coming by like, hey man, I know where you can, you know, build some traction up. I'm like, oh okay, <laughs> whatever. But and then in the system, it's a whole different system. Like the food stamp system. Like yeah, they see how much money I'm making, but they're not coming to the store. So how I got caught was basically like I was trying to go big on big. You know what I'm saying? Like my goal was to make like two fifty a month, and I knew what it, what it required. So I needed like multiple stores and I needed multiple workers. So I hired these young niggas from the neighborhood. Like they was hanging my little brother and shit. And I was like, yo, I need y'all to swipe for me. You know what I'm saying? I got your apartment, got them like a whole crib set up. This is, this is y'all job. You're going to sit here from nine to five and swipe cards, bro. And one of these little niggas just took it upon himself to he he just seen he didn't see the the whole picture. He just seen one one part of it. Like he's swiping these cards. He's like, damn, bro, you got all these cards. This nigga making a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it won't hurt if I just just take a take a few. So he started taking a few. Then a few turned into 150. Right. And then so my sister had a job which was basically she need I need her to go take these cards every morning. I need to take like 30 cards to these little niggas every morning and. She started slipping on her job. She would just drop off like 150, just give it to them. They would, not that, 30 at a time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You, you drop off 150, now I can take 10. I can finesse. Right. 30, you, know, 30 you, could, you could count, I right, bet. She'd go three or four days and like she was fucking up my operation. And I really couldn't be hands on with it because like I'm in really trying, I'm, I'm running the store and I'm trying to bring in more cars. I got other workers I got to deal with. So like that would fuck up my operation. So what he did was he took like 150 cards and, um, he started selling them shits on the street. He started doing some dumb shit. And with some food stamp shit like uh, 5400 type shit. What's that? Like, you know how niggas Yeah, <laughs> yes, he's standing outside of Kroger selling cars, bro. And I'm like, and I didn't know it was him at first. So like, I just went to go do inventory one day and I'm counting the cars. I'm like, damn, I'm missing like 150 cars. Like, fuck my shit at. So I called my sister, I was like, yo, you had anybody in here? I had a little office dedicated just for my cars. So she was like, nah. So, all right. So, I'm trying to just do the homework on it. Like, who fuck touched my cars? I'm asking these little niggas, yo, y'all touch my cars? Nah, we don't know nothing. So, at at this point, everybody's a suspect. So, I find out it was them. Um, they finally, well, one of them finally admitted to it. And, you know, I thought about killing them, but it just really wasn't worth it. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, 
I'm gonna go do a life sentence because this nigga stole, you know what I'm saying, 150 cars. Like, of course you're gonna pay for it some way, somehow, but I can't risk my life like that, you know what I'm saying? But like, this little nigga, he, like, greed, you know what I'm saying? I, I get it, you know what I'm saying? Like, greed is always gonna take over a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you like, if you're just looking at the money, you don't you don't know the back end. You don't know all I'm doing. You don't know what it took to get these cards. You know what I'm saying? You just looking at it like, damn, he ain't gonna miss these cards. Fuck right. it. Let me just. And he ain't really didn't even come up. And it's also like um, we talk about it all the time. Not even just greed. Is that that sense of instant gratification? Yeah. Right. It's like, man, this nigga eating. If it's this easy, then I yeah. can do it. When it's not that easy, like, right. you don't have. It's a whole operation to this shit. It's a whole step by step process right. to this shit. Right. And you want to fuck it up trying to skip the steps, right? Right. It's kind of like what we see on Instagram. We see on social media. It's like niggas see somebody with a million followers or whatever. Even what we just talked about, niggas see somebody with a big ass chain and be like, oh, nah, his chain bigger than mine. I need to get yeah, that. Yeah. Like, nigga, you don't know the, the sweat, the pain, Facts. the process that yeah. got to get to this. You That's why you're supposed to compare yourself to the next man. Facts. <clears throat> but my bad. You can finish. You were saying. But I was talking to my nigga <clears throat> earlier today about the same situation. It was like, he was one of the niggas that I put on too. And I was like, bro, like if that nigga never fucked this shit up, bro, like everybody could have been up for real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is like back in 2014, 15. Like if you if if like he was at the bottom, like you ain't you gotta really work your way up. Like, yeah, you making an hourly wage, but shit, like you work long enough, like shit, of course I'm gonna put you on. Like, I never be the nigga to just to feed you, you know what I'm saying, just crumbs. I'm gonna make sure that you straight because right. shit, if you just made me a million dollars, like why would I just pay you fifteen dollars an hour? Like, I'm gonna show you how to do this shit or move you up the ladder or pay like something but he fucked up the whole operation bro also i look like i don't know how i don't know if you look at it like this i feel like you know there's a lot of risk that go into this shit you feel me so yeah. i know if if i'm taking care of you is a better chance that you want to make sure i'm good on the back and if, and if anything right. go fuck up but, but is that true though because uh, you could still you can make a nigga million and he still snitch on you that's a fact so like <laughs> I'm, I'm, just trying, fact. I'm trying to figure out like I, i'm thinking but i've never been in a situation i yeah. don't really i try to keep my hands clean so I don't know, but I'm thinking like, man, I'm gonna make sure a nigga good. So if it ever go down, he make sure I'm good. But it's like, mm -hmm. man, that nigga still gonna fuck you over. And I had to give these these talk to like my team, like, yo, listen, if the feds ever come, bro, shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like, because like it's different when you in that. We could talk like right now, and I'm thinking like you loyal. But like once you get in that interrogation room, like once you once you, we're split apart, everything on the line. You know what I'm they saying? They say like, everything on the line yeah. the whole time. They probably can't even do anything. Right. But you don't know that. They just telling you they it's on some movie shit. They saying I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And yeah. like, oh no, nah, I'm scared. Yeah. So it was it was one of those situations. Like yo, listen, the feds may come one day. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being prepared. Like listen, I had to get my sister to talk. Anybody that was around me, like listen, if anything ever happens, like don't you don't have to talk. Just ask for a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Like that's they can't say nothing else to you. Even if, if they catch you, they catch you. It's nothing else they can do after that. You telling them any information is not going to save you. So just please be quiet. But so like when my when the feds came and they kicked the door down, um, I had like I had like a couple people at my house and then they, they went to my store, then I had one of the workers there and they, they sat him down and questioned him and I kinda prepared him for the moment. They were like, Who who owns the store? What you doing here? Like what do you he was like, he was really scared of shit, but he didn't tell him nothing. He was like, I, I want a lawyer. And that just canceled the conversation. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with me when they came to my house. Like, when they came to my crib, I really thought they was there for somebody else. I was so confused because I didn't even think I was doing anything illegal. Not in big time that the feds finna come in here for this shit. And it was like, um, they was like, yeah, there he go right there. And I was like, damn, who me? Yeah, you ain't think what you was doing with the food stamp shit was illegal. Mm -mm. You crazy, y'all shit, motherfucking mouth. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, it was so, like, I was so under the radar. I was like, they can't be here for me. They had guns. It was like 16 people with ARs out. I'm thinking, like, okay, they got to be here for the homies because they be doing some shit, so they can't be for me. They was like, yeah, he go right there, he go right there. And I was like, damn, like, so he stepped me, he pulled me outside. He was like, yeah, you know what I'm here? I was like, nah, I don't. He was like, I'm here with the USDA. And I was like, what the fuck is that? The facts. What the fuck is that? He was like, he was like, um, we we were over food stamps. I was like, damn. I just kept my composure. Like, I said, all right. So they had me in handcuffs. He was like, he's like, you're not arrested. I was like, oh shit. I was like, what's up then? He was like, well, um, this is just a warrant. We came to we came to search your crib. I was like, all right. So they pulled me upstairs. They're like, all right. So um, he's like, you got a store? I'm like, yeah. They're like, what's the name of it? And I was like, hold up. Fuck this is. I was like, oh no. Nah. I said, I need a lawyer. Canceled it. Cause it was, he asked me questions. It's another nigga writing this shit. He ready to write all this shit down. And I know they're gonna use this shit in court. Right. I was like, oh nah. And then they took my girlfriend up there. And I was like, 
I just gave her that signal, like, don't say nothing. Same thing with her, you know what I'm saying? It just canceled out, so they, they searched my whole crib, took my computers, took my phones, took any type of paperwork. They found everything they were looking for. But In your they, crib? Yeah. So, how, how at this point, how old were you? 26. You ain't listen to like, I don't know, you know, old rap music when they be like, you don't never eat a shit while you eat that or some shit like that, like never bring the shit home. You ain't never listen to none of that shit. Yo, listen. <laughs> or the money was just coming so abundantly. It's like, man. I didn't have like, good thing for me, I didn't have no cars there. Well, okay. I did have cars. Cause like, I had a whole office dedicated to it. Like, I got like At your house? No, I got an office. Yeah. Like maybe a couple miles down the street where I kept cards at, you know what I'm saying? So it was away from me, but like every day I'm, I'm getting new cards. So okay. like I just picked up a shipment of cards. Like I got like 20 cards sitting and I got my laptops. I'm not thinking like, I'm thinking just if the cards are away from me, boom, I'm good. But like. You got the information on the <clears> laptop. Man, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't thinking like 10 steps ahead back then. Okay. I was only thinking one step ahead. 26, I can see that, but I feel like if you went that deep, I'm thinking you thinking 10 steps ahead. No, I wasn't, bro. I can't. I ain't even afraid to admit it. Like I was moving so fast, I was only thinking about the money. So, I'm gonna ask you this, because I'm intrigued as a motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie. When I seen this shit, I'm like, the fuck. All right, you was trying to do two fifty a month. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to that? Mm -mm. I probably got to um, maybe about like, because how it works is my store can only take thirty, forty thousand at a time. Anything like over 50, 60, like it go by square footage. So I couldn't go over that limit or like you'll be red flagged and they'll come check you out. So I had to stay under that 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 limit. So like I'm building though, I'm building stores. I got like two or three stores. I called all my homies like, yo, you want a store? I can guarantee you like 20, 30,000 a month. And like, I right, bet. So I'm, I got like five stores on the way. Luckily for me, they came right before I started these stores. So like my case would have been a way bigger case. My case was like right like under, a million dollars. It was like nine hundred thousand. When I read this, it said four hundred. Nah, that's what that's what they could prove. So like the case was between two stores, it was eight hundred eighty thousand. But one store burnt down, and they couldn't they couldn't grab the in information from that. So that one store had like four hundred thousand. So the case was nine hundred, but they only could prove four hundred. They only could prove eight. I mean four eighty something, four forty. Who knows? But it was definitely. Yeah. Not that. Definitely not. That's what we're gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> so all in all, honestly, so let me ask you. Three year, two years in jail, right? One year away from me in a uh facility. If I if I say you know how they doing a this or that thing, would you do three years in jail for a million dollars? I sure would. So all in all, was it worth it? Now wait, I can't say that now. Because it's so easy to make a million dollars. No, but to go through that again, I would go through that same process again Sheesh. because I learned so much in that process. It's like without the knowledge, though, just for the money, <clears throat> would you do it? Whatever you kept, whatever, whatever the situation was, we don't gotta say nothing. Whatever, whatever, without the knowledge, would you do it for whatever you was able to keep? Nah, <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. Nah. The knowledge is what is the most important part. The money, but you ain't gonna do it again. I, I mean, nah, I hope not. Nah, the the money wasn't the most important part because, like, when they came, they was they was, they were saying they they looking for like four hundred thousand dollars, and I was like, damn, I didn't even know I made that much money. I didn't know I had that much money. Like from my two stores, I was just going, and I didn't I only had like sixty thousand in the bank, but I got a bunch of money on these cars. I like. These cars got a thousand, couple thousand on them because I gotta filter them, filter, filter them out so slowly. I'm only taking like twenty dollars a day from a car, ten dollars. You know what I'm saying? So like, it started accumulating over time. So like, they didn't freeze my account. They only took like sixteen thousand from my safe. So like, I'm thinking like, damn, bro, like, where the hell is this money at? But this is money that I just invested, okay. paying people, opening stores, getting new cards. So so you wasn't able to keep a lot, I guess. I mean, no, no, because I mean, I mean, I can't say this on camera, but like, I, it didn't stop me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kept going because I already knew I'm about to do some time. Like, let me turn this shit up. So it it wasn't worth it. No. 
I mean, I made, it might say 800,000, but like since I started, they only starting from the stores. So before I had the stores, I was making money. And then so after they took my stores, I still was making money. So I ain't gonna lie, man. Niggas kill niggas for much less. You feel me? So I'm just listening. Like it's a nigga out there that's hungry. Like man, shit, I do that shit to make sure my family good. That's yeah. what. That's what I hear. It, but, it sound good, but like when that money coming in, you ain't even. You gonna be blowing that shit as fast as it's coming. I can. Um, I can imagine that. Cause a nigga ain't ain't never used to having shit. He don't know yeah. how to keep shit. You gonna blow it. So what about all these other like? I'm talking talking about finesse. You hear money, man. You hear yeah. all like niggas like get a laptop, get these free bands up. Yeah. You feel me? Like we had the pandemic, niggas turned into the pandemic. Like, mm -hmm. what is your thoughts on finesse now? Like, I mean, I see is is rich and unemployed. Finesse is only club. Like, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on the whole finesse? Man, I say get it how you live, <laughs> but um, I I try not to like you know my Instagram. Like, I know what I preach. And like, I'm only talking about what I experienced. So like, I know people like are intrigued by it. It's like when I post that type of stuff, like people hit me up like, yo, put me on, put me on. It's like, bro, it's not it's not what you think it is. It's not mm -hmm. just like trapping, like you go get some drugs and you start flipping that shit next day. Like it's so many lanes when it comes to like finessing and fraud. It's millions of ways to do it. And you really gotta find your own lane in it. Like sometimes you might get like the pandemic where it came around and everybody was on the same wave. But like once that shit died down, it was like people kind of like was lost or, or trying to find a new wave. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like. Let's talk.